I get to finally talk about Best Pony, you guys. Get ready for some serious geeking out. As I stated in my Pinkie Pie video, I grew up more of a tomboy who was more interested in dinosaurs than Disney princesses, and was unafraid to jump into the mud and get dirty just for the fun of it. So to be quite honest, the fact that it was the prim feminine fashionista who became Best Pony surprised me more than anyone. Rarity was everything I was not. Elegant, socially savvy, and confident, I had to admit that I only saw Rarity as the required girly girl of a show for little girls. She really didn't stand out to me for a rather long time. AJ and Fluttershy were definitely more my pace from the get-go with the hard-working big sister vibe and the social anxiety I knew all too well. So why, after relating so much to two polar opposite ponies to our marshmallow girl here, did she get such a place of honor? It's a strange story and has a lot to do with the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Okay, so I can hear a lot of you naysayers out there groaning about the MBTI. Whether you don't want to be put into a box or you doubt the accuracy due to it being created by authors instead of psychologists or whatever your reasoning for disliking the MBTI is, I'm going to ask you to set it aside for a sec here because this was a big part of my own growth as a person. To be absolutely clear, personality tests are not ways to excuse having bad habits or behaviors, nor are they built to define every little aspect of who you are. They are a starting point to gaining a deeper understanding of yourself and your preferences in handling different situations in life. Honestly, personality tests should really just be called preference tests. Also, don't take the 16 personalities test. It's just a mood calculator and is in no way accurate or true to the actual MBTI, which is determined by a lot of self-reflection, self-awareness, and even input from those who know you best. But I digress. In the MBTI, I'm an INFP. For those of you who don't know, that stands for Introverted Intuitive Feeling Perceiver. Essentially, it means I'm a quiet airhead who, at my most confident, instinctively knows people really well. Uh, obviously, I'm not infallible with that ability, and when I have a lot of self-doubt, I can seriously misjudge people. But a lot of INFPs like me get mistaken for INFJs or ENFJs, which are short for introverted intuitive feeling judgers and extroverted intuitive feeling judgers, respectively. Because we are often misunderstood in our communications, which is an INFJ trait, and because we have a lot of friends, which is an ENFJ trait. Now, I use the term friends loosely here as INFPs are friendly people, but we don't share near as much with others as others share with us. So it looks like we're extroverts when in actuality, we just like people. It's complicated. I might dive into it more in depth if people ask in the comments and do a whole series of ponies in the real MBTI if you want. We'll see. Long story short, Rarity is, essentially, an ENFJ, the type I had miscast myself as. When I realized that, she pinged up on my radar. I started paying more attention to her episodes and really started to understand and appreciate her as a character. The more I watched her, the more I wanted to become more like her. I wanted that confidence. I wanted to give as freely as she gave. I wanted to reach out to others the way she reached out. Even after realizing I was actually an INFP, Rarity remained best pony for me. Through her example, she taught me to be generous while remaining wise, savvy while remaining kind, and to own and appreciate my own kind of beauty. So, here are the five things I did to show my love for this character in my reimagining. I gave Rarity a classical look of a unicorn. I felt like, out of all the main six, Rarity would pull off the cloven hooves, lion's tail, and elegant figure the best without breaking character. Drama queen or not, Rarity has always had this sense of poise and grace. She has always set a high standard for herself and those that she surrounds herself with. And I'm not talking about breeding and bloodlines either, though she certainly seems to care about that at first. The same night she realized how disgustingly disrespectful and entitled Prince Blueblood was, she didn't cling to him still just for the social standing. She dumped his entitled little butt in a very satisfying manner. I feel like this fit in well with the original lore of unicorns only appearing to very select few people of pure heart. Uh, the amount of feathering on her hooves was purely self-indulgent, 
And out of any pony, I think Rarity would have had the determination and dedication to keeping long flowing fetlock feathers clean and luxurious. She just deserves them. Yes, I very much tightened her waistline and my reasoning isn't what you might think it would be. All throughout my life, I was praised for how skinny I am. Being skinny was the body type to have, no curves allowed. This affected me rather harshly in my later years, as I was so determined to stay skinny that I became borderline anorexic, limiting what I ate to such an extent, and then over-exercising on top of it all meant that I was a decent amount underweight when I came home from college. It's my own headcanon that, like me, Rarity also struggled with those issues and now works to overcome them. The waistline being somewhat of a scar reminding her to care for herself in a healthy manner and helping her help others who might be in a similar position. With the mane and tail, I just vamped up the fanciness. Those curls are drool-worthy, and playing with them was very satisfying. Quite honestly, I probably should have added in more accessories, but the crown dangle just made my brain go brrrr. I'd imagine the gem being a polished aquamarine she'd found herself in one of her digs. Lastly, yes, I made her a dapple gray. Dapple Grey is my favorite horse coat color, and with her coat already off-white, I had to add in the spots and fading. It took her design to a whole new level in my opinion, and I just couldn't bring myself to put her cutie mark on top of it. She looks like royalty in this drawing, and I love every bit of it. I, I honestly do. I love this reimagining of my best pony and kind of want to see her animated and come to life now. What are your thoughts on this reimagining though? What would you change about Rarity's look? Let me know in the comments below. A special thank you to my awesome patrons, Director Shadow, Evan Beck, Ram Digijam, Kira Ledmoon, Rocky Harmony, Sakura the Kirin, and all my other supporters. You guys are absolutely amazing. Stay fluffy, my friends. See you next time. <laughs>